Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. What's up, rock and rollers? Yep, it's that time. Your iPhone, your watch, your clock. It's correct. It's time for another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show where we talk about all things like music, motivation, success. A lot of drummers come through this, this doorway right here. I got my guest, co-host, co-producer, Jim McCarthy, jimmccarthyvoiceovers.com. It's Hello. your show.co. Co. It's just podcast network. That's right. Jim, we've been, what have you been up to, man? It's been so crazy busy for me, man. I'll tell you, Rich, I've been playing my drums lately with these handy, uh, fancy schmancy Rich Redmond drumsticks. I know, those are the ones my mom, they've only took like 47 years to develop, and my mom loves them. Of course, they're the available is, at Amazon.com. Here's the thing, is that when you actually use these drums, it's drumsticks, they're not, they're not, you know, it's not, I'm not saying it because it's yours. What? They are really good drumsticks. Well, it's a it's a it's a modified five B, yeah. and it has a finish on it that's tacky, like me. After three alcoholic beverages, it gets real tacky, and it allows you to hold on to the stick a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. So, Active you know, grip, powered by Promark <laughs> Diodario, or is it Diodario? I don't know, but hey, I'm excited about today. As always, we have a real special guest, but I learned that today's guest. I think this is his part, first drum podcast. That's right. And we're getting him for the first time. That's right. Today's guest, it's Chris Powell. He's ha he, ha he hails, edit, from Redlands, <laughs> California. Chris Powell hails from Redlands, California. He did the whole L.A. drum scene. He's called Nashville Home since 2007. He's an award-winning drummer. Modern Drummer Magazine, the Reader Polls, in 2022, voted him Best Country Americana Drummer, and he's played with people like Brandy Carlisle, The High Women, Anderson East, Jamie Johnson, Shania, Brett Eldridge, Gavin DeGraw, the list goes on and on. Our friend, Chris Powell. What's up, man? Hey, hey man. Buddy. Dude, thanks for coming on the yeah, show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's yeah, really man. fun. It's awesome. Uh, Jim and I have been doing this a while. We started this about five years ago. We went through COVID doing the whole thing on Zoom, and we're pushing 200 episodes. Lots of drummers. We've had the the Paul Limes and the Lonnie Wilsons and the Greg Morrows and the Eddie Bears is on. We had to have Chris Powell on. Oh, man. Thanks. Be because when, I mean, you have your studio tan, man. You were always in the studio creating great music. You have this amazing um, playlist on Apple Music yeah. um, called On The Session. So That's everybody right. check that out. And yeah. then your amazing wife made you a discography, the Chris Powell discography. <laughs> Is did. it public? Can they? Can people I, find it? You know, I don't know if it's public. <laughs> <I'll have to laughs> ask your wife. I think she just made it so that I would remember um, all the different things that I played on. But the, the, the funny thing is is, is, is that there are some guys that are just like, they're doing it. They're making records every day. You can hear them all over the radio. This yep. am amazing body of work. Work, but you don't run into them, you know what I mean? And That's you're right. one of those guys that I know you're out there. I've known you've been out there for 20 years doing the great thing, but I never run into you. I know, I know. We, we've, we've, I, I think I've seen you at a couple venues, yeah, and we've passed by each other. And hey, I'm Chris, how you doing? And then I didn't see you for another three, four years. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's how that worked out. Yeah. Yeah, man. Is that, does that happen often with you guys in the business? I, you know, I, I think so. I yeah. think. I think one of the great things about playing music, especially live and all that, is you'll see people that you know or you kind of know. Uh, uh, you'll see them at a venue, and you'll you'll hang out, you'll have a drink together, and then you won't see them for four years. Yeah. And then the next time you see them at a venue, it'll be like you just had the show yesterday. And, hey, it's great to see you again. How's yeah. everything How long I been? remember four, you. Uh, it's been, four, yeah. four years. Yeah. Um, and that happens like you're like because Nashville is great in the sense that we do a lot of tributes and benefits and there's yeah. always something happening and then you know you get thirty drummers in the room backstage and we're all playing with different acts and be like oh, everybody's hugging and out it's like oh my god we really got to do that thing and get that coffee and yeah it might not happen for a long long time and this is Nashville relatively small relatively yes. easy to get around yep. you know I've spent a decade in Los Angeles going kind of like kind of trying to feed that system I still have a boatload of drums in Burbank. Yeah. Do I leave them there or do I rock a cargo them? I don't know. I, I'd say get them back over there. <laughs> if I, were you. I, left, I left two drum sets there and they're both gone now. But the, but the thing is, well, why are they gone? Yeah. They, they got stolen. Oh, oh no. Somebody broke into the, to the, to the storage, Cardiff, yeah. to the storage unit place that they yeah. had them. No insurance and claims. Stole, no, I called them. I said, where, where are my kids? They said, we'll look for them. And I said, oh. okay, well that was 10 years ago. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> what kind of kids were they? Man, I had a, I had one of the first sonars 
Oh, the, amazing! Oh, it was one of the first sonars. There, it was a like, bird's eye maple sonar kit. You know, you know that had the special proprietary you, drum key. You got to have that always, okay. that always made you mad, and yeah. you just brought a flathead screwdriver with you because because you always lost the key. Totally, um, and I love the Germans. Yeah, that's you know? right. And then, and, then, and then there was an, a like a like a like a seventy old seventies Gretsch. No, both of them oh, got stolen. Yeah. yeah, it was a bummer. But I mean but, that that damn urban sprawl that we have out there, and you were you you kicked it in in Orange County a lot. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So when yeah. and that's where that you know the the L A flake that term it's a real thing because people were like yeah yeah you were, we'll, we'll make it happen but. Getting in the car for an hour and a half. Nobody does that. Is, no, and, and it's kind of like happening in Nashville right now. You know. Well, yeah, but I think the thing is too. It's like you were talking about drummers seeing each other and hanging out, and then yeah. we're like, oh, we got it. Well, I always kind of looked at that as, hey, this is actually a really good thing. That means everybody's busy, working. Everybody's yeah. working, and everybody's yeah. making money, and that's great. And yeah. and and if we actually get on a tour together, that would be awesome. I so, mean, and well, and this kind of makes me. Remember the early days of like building the Aldine brand, and we're doing like county fairs and state fairs and mm -hmm. rock clubs and colleges. And I could have sworn at that same time around 2007 when you moved to Nashville, you were playing live with Jamie Johnson. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so so let's dust it off, man. How how did that whole thing happen? What brought you to Nashville? Uh, I was in L.A. I was working with Dave Cobb back then. Even I mean, I, I've been with Dave Cobb for. 20, 20 some years. So you know? he's a, a, for those that don't know, he is a award winning top call, super hot producer. Some of that, now. his acts would be like um, Chris Stapleton. That's right. Um, does, what are some other uh, huge ones? Jason Isabel, uh, 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 man, he did all the Oak Ridge Boys. He did all the, I mean, Rival Sons. Shooter, Shooter Jennings, Rival Son. I mean, on and on That's and right. on. He's, yes. he's a, um, yeah, yeah. He, he, everybody would say he does everybody right now, but, we know that's not true because there's all these other producers doing that. So, so once again, relationships in action in the sense that you had a relationship with him on the West Coast. That's right. And he moves here. Yeah. So I I was cutting with him uh, on the West Coast because my brother, uh, Leroy Powell, I don't know if you've met Leroy. No. Uh, Leroy Powell uh, was playing with Shooter Jennings at the time. Okay. And, uh, and they had done a record and then my brother wanted to do a record. So he talked to Dave Cobb and said, hey, I got my little brother that'll do this. Hey, and it's great. It's free. You yeah. Know? So I showed up. <laughs> so I showed up, did the record, and and uh, uh, Dave used me ever since. And so Amazing. so I just started playing on all his records. Played on Nokers Boys record. Did some stuff with Shooter, all the different stuff. And then Jamie Johnson came along, and I was a huge Waylon fan. And uh, uh, Jamie or uh, Dave came along and said, "Hey, I want you to listen to this." And then there was this Waylon song I had never heard before. I was like, "This is amazing." How did you get this? He said, no, this is the guy we're playing with today. <laughs> oh. And Jamie walks in and I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. So anyways, uh, long story short, I did the record with him. It was all great. Uh, and then Jamie called me and said, come on the road um, for three weeks because his drummer at the time had to go back out with George Strait was Mike Kennedy. Mike Kennedy, guy was so yeah, yeah, absolutely, man, yeah. who's an amazing human being. And he, he, uh, he had to go back out with George Strait because George Strait was only working you know, three weeks out of the year, yeah. you know? And, uh, and so I came in and I filled in for him and, uh, <laughs> Jamie asked me to stay. And so me and Mike figured out a way to play together by setting up a whole percussion section and a, and a, and a drum set and, uh, just switching off every two songs. So, Man. so, uh, but what happened was, is my wife said <clears throat> that she's sick of having a husband that only comes home to visit. So I decided to move the entire, uh, uh, family out to Nashville because yeah. uh, uh, Jamie called Nashville home base and it didn't make any sense to just fly home every Monday. Right. You know, so, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's what brought us out. And man, it was an amazing move. For so me. when you're, when you're playing a double right. drum setup like that, yeah, you got to find some common ground with that drum kit, I guess. Right. You know, cause everyone's got their own setup, seat heights, things of that nature. I well, mean, yeah, but I think that um, one of the things I've always loved, especially about drums is that, like when I walk into a studio, I never change anything. Really? However they set it up is the way I play it. Because Wait oh, a minute. That's crazy. Really? Well, because I think the way that when you sit down and it's different, it's going to make you play different. And I think that's great. I think I don't like that every album sounds the same or every drum tone is the same. I want to sit different. I want to play that fill different because maybe I'm a little off center or maybe, yeah. I'm, maybe I'm this or that or maybe I won't try that fill because – 
man, this is really uncomfortable and I can't move. I have never heard this from a drummer. This is great. Because you got to have it set up a certain way, don't you? Well... Uh, you know, like if, if you've ever, <laughs> thanks Jim, it's like, uh, put me on the spot. No, um, I'm, he made me sound like a total diva. <laughs> no, this but, is, no, but it's not diva. This is one, one micrometer. So it's like, you know, if I were to sit down on Mike Portnoy's kid, he sits high in the saddle. Well, you know, and it's like, I, height is definitely an issue for a shorty like me. You right. know, I mean, I usually, I'm, it's not good for my back, but my throne is pretty Tommy Aldridge low. My snare drum is low. It's angled. I got it from Liberty. I got it from Kenny. And so that kind of helps with my physiology, but the idea of, so do you have a, you don't have a cartage kit. You just use a house kit is what you're saying? I try to use a house kit every time. That's yeah. awesome. So it's like a, oh. it's like a fun, almost like challenge. Absolutely. Every session I go to, I think it's awesome. I, I If there's a chance that there's a house kit, and even if they say, well, uh, we've got one here, but it's not that good. I'm like, well, it's a drum set, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it'll sound like drums, right? And they're like, yeah. And so I'll go up, I'll say, just set it up. And then. Yeah, I, I love it because if the hair, if the if the snare is super high, you know, then your 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 hands got to be super high to get inside the center, and so you 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 play way different. And I always think about like Zigaboo and all these people that played, and they did stuff. And everybody's like, how did they get that groove and that sound? Well, most he played with his left a lot, yeah. and people don't know that, and yeah. so that's why that. You know, you get that sissy strut. All, all do the, oh mm. my gosh! And, and, do that. and and nobody could ever get that feel. Well, it's like we'll get off center, and yeah. then and then you'll find that feel. So when you go to use a house kit, are you bringing your own plates, your own pedals, your own snare drum? I'll bring my own kick drum pedal just in case it's a it's a it's a junker. <laughs> yeah. um, sometimes I'll bring my own hi hat stand, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but I I will bring my own cymbals. Yeah. Um, but usually I don't use crashes, so I, I I'll only have a set of hi hats and a ride. So you don't use crash cymbals? Usually don't, no. Wait a minute, this is incredible. So is this- <laughs> What do you this? use? Are you just crash on the ride cymbal? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, well, so you have to have a washy ride cymbal a little bit. So yeah, so I went and I found the the uh, Zildjian Karope band, which is a maze or Karope, Karope? Yeah. Kar Kar I don't know how you say it, but it's awesome. Yeah. It's really great. <laughs> Karope, I think it's- <laughs> Yeah, I think it is Karope. And, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, it's thin enough. I love all thin cymbals, obviously, but but it-, it um, you can use it as a crash. You can use it as a ride. You can kind of do anything you want. And, you know, I mean, it, you know, every song's different, obviously, as you yeah. know, you know, so, so if you have to bring in a crowd, I'm not saying I'm, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of like anything else. I'm not, I'm not completely opposed to crashes. I just find that in the studio, you usually don't need them because it's so washy and you can always add something later yeah. and always, you know, in the world that we live in today. You know? Now, but even if, yeah. if you were got called to do like a right down the center but just corporate pop country gig, you wouldn't have a crash. Well, I mean, are you using? Because I'm looking at if pictures it's a pop of country, like pop thing? country, just yeah. straight up down the I middle. I would try. Yeah, I would try because that's because that'll give it a different sound. And, yeah, and just a different a different thing. Just I don't to, know, just Richard. To I think the whole crash thing is kind of not diva. Is a little bit diva. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if Chris has ever seen me play, he I, 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 there. I am laying into those crashes. Of course. Yeah. You yeah. beat the crap out of them. Hey, listen, like I said, I don't think there's any problem with it at all. I think it's an awesome, and I grew up always doing that. I think what happened was, is with Dave Cobb, he, the 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 mics that he uses are so hot that, you know, and I've tested it. If you rip a piece of paper, you blow everybody's eardrums so you out. You play soft. Wow. So I found, we went out and found the tiniest drumsticks you can find. I mean, all the way to, you know, I've, I've like done whole songs. seven A's? I've done whole songs with number two pencils. Oh, wow. So just to so keep he just it. Cranks it cranks the joke the mic. It's cranked. And so you yeah. have to hold your breath. So no farting, yeah. You have to hold your breath during the thing, you <laughs> no know. Fart, no farting. And, uh, and, uh, and, then, and then we'll cut a whole song. And so any, like, big crash. Yeah, dude. If I just hit very softly on the ride. It's explosion. Like, with the, with the, uh, with the middle of the stick, yeah. it's going to sound like a crash. Now with the number two pencil, are you playing on the lead side or you play with the eraser, eraser side? side? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you get the you get the little metal rim on there, like almost like a ding. Sometimes ding. Sometimes you can, yeah. It could ding, 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 ding. Well, that's that happened once. I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and go. Everybody play with number two pencils. It's uh, <laughs> no man. I found the uh, uh, Zildjian made the Hal Blaine stick, mm -hmm. and Hal Blaine stick was the tiniest stick. Interesting that I could find, and it actually worked out because he's one of my favorite drummers of all time. Yeah. So, so it's so tiny. Every other drummer <laughs> that picks these up 
is like, what, how do you, what is, do you pick your teeth with this? Like, yeah, what, right? is, what is this thing for? My God. I, and, well, I just had sushi. So I heard about like Joey Warrenker playing tracks with Beck with sushi, with yes. chopsticks. Yeah, with chopsticks. Absolutely. Yeah. Does that make sense? I just don't get called for that kind of thing. I mean, I love it. You know, the funny thing is, is that the, <laughs> the one thing that in, secretly I love, which is the tortured troubadour the songwriter that you know he gets his press shot on the railroad tracks and you know what i mean he's headed to the troubadour yeah. and three chords in the truth you know your steve earls you know your early melon camps your lucinda's your sean colvin's you know that i love it yeah it's fun but i i don't get called for it you know no, what i mean people no. are like have you seen this guy beat the shit there's no way we're going to be able to control no, this no. so it's almost become i'm a caricature of myself no it's 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 because you're on the road see all the time i, I love <laughs> I love that sound. So, so say you're playing that soft. You're playing that soft, and then you know the 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 hot sound to go to from the last decade is the resurgence of the the baseball bat and the birthday cake, the the yeah. snare drum. Mm -hmm. So, if you're working with Dave Cobb, what's the trick there? Is it a is it a, a vintage 1920s Black Beauty with the duct tape on it with a single ply head? What are the tricks to well, get that? Always, but there's so many different tricks. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I you know, like the Beatles put out books on it, you know, yeah. about how to get different sounds. But but if that's what you're going for, I most of what we did, especially for the Americana scene or the country scene, was always that down thing. But if you're going for something big, obviously, you know, we're at RCA in Nashville you know, big room. Yeah. We just bring the kit out of the booth and put it in the main room. Yes. And I mean, I'll still use those tiny sticks, but now we're going to open the snare up and bring it up. And, 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 you know, your overhead mic's not going to be right at your forehead. It's going to be up higher. higher. And, and so every song's different, obviously. And, and, and I mean, I, you know, I did, uh, uh, you know, the Coulter wall records, like, and, have you heard Coulter? He's no, I want to check that out. Oh man, he's, I'm pulling up your discography. It's going to be my new thing. Okay, man. well, well, Coulter Wall is just the the guy. His voice is just insane. But but I actually put a post. Uh, well, I didn't. My your wife did. My wife put a post yeah. out. <laughs> She's your social media manager. Uh, you know, I'm here in this you know five million dollar studio, and as a snare, we used a, a cardboard box. Love it. You know, because it was that because we actually cut that with him standing right in front of the kick drum. So that whole record was just him and me playing that That's awesome. right in front. And I had never heard the songs before. Yeah. So the whole idea was I'm hearing these songs for the first time. What am I going to play here on this box? <laughs> Amazing. Know? And it was awesome. It was super fun and it, and it ended up doing great for him and, yeah. and, and, and the whole bit. So that is so creative. Like I, um, I, I played brushes on a um, tape, reel-to-reel -reel tape box yeah. as kind of like an overdub on on the verses of Big Green Tractor. Instead of using a loop from an yes. MPC or something, we were like, let's, let's create. Hey, look, a human. Yeah, no. A, a I, human doing the thing. I love that. Yeah. I, I think that's, see, and it's that kind of stuff that's so cool. And it's such a, such a thing that most people don't, you know, they'll hear the sound. And nowadays everybody thinks, oh, it must be a loop from something. But I love the fact that you're like, no, man, I'm going to, how about I go in and play it? And yeah, we're percussionists. Yeah, we can make a sound out of anything. And there's you know? so many, so many sounds that can come out of a kit. You know, that's why I love the old jazz players because they would say that, you know, each Tom has four different sounds. You know, it's not Depending just where one yeah. where you're hitting it, the rims, whether you're going to hit it together, you know, and that's, and the kick drum has four different sounds. So we have so many different voices we can use. Why, why have a computer do it? Yeah. You know? and, and the tea towels, do you do the tea towels where you can adjust where they are? Yeah, a yeah. lot. A lot of times, uh, uh, you know, mo most of the Beatles stuff was full tea towel. Full tea towels. Which is awesome. Yeah. And, and I love that sound. It's such a fun, it, it, uh, to me, that, that's like shutting off the, the, the distortion on a guitar where you have nowhere to hide, you know? Yeah. Because it's just good. It's like everything is so staccato. Yes, that uh, I love that. So, what are the? Uh, do you use a variety of different types of tea towels, or do I just go? People just go to Amazon. British tea towels, or uh, yes, yeah, all yeah. different, all different kinds. Uh, uh, Bandanas. Uh, yes, and, and I love thin ones. I love I love thick ones on certain stuff. I love. Uh, um, man, you can go to the drum shops now, and I forget the name course drum supply or nelson well yeah yeah but but the actual um so we used to uh, the whole first part of my career i was using wallets i had a leather wallet 
uh, uh, on me. And I put that on the snare to get that, 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 Dead uh, zone. that yeah. snare weight. Yeah. yeah. Now they make snare weights. Now. Yeah. So nice. I well, mean, you see them advertised. They're like, uh, you put them on the lug. Yes. And they, they have weights on. That's right. They have, they have drum tacos now. Oh, yeah. drum little tacos, sound yeah. bags. I have a Mr. Muff. They're, but you have to have enough experience. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about it's, that it's here? It's a commercial that, product. Is that, is that, it is. It's actually upstairs on my, on my kit. And you put a washer in it, uh, or a bunch of washers to weigh, weigh down the this stairs. This may but, sound weird, but I would love for you to show me that. Sure. Mad, I'd, love to, I'd love to see your big muff. <laughs> Mr. Muff. Mr. Big muff. Mr. Muff. Um, but the thing is, is that you, you have to have enough experience to know, ooh, you know, the drum taco's got a little bit of a, lo you know, a, a shorter sound than the snare weight. And, of course. You, yeah. you have to have the experience with that to know, like, oh, what's going to be better on this? The, the you know, the the Jeff Percaro gaff mustache thing, yeah. or is it going to be the tea towels? Yeah. Or I mean, it, still, still, I mean, gaff tape is still your best. Uh, gaff tape and toilet paper are still your favorite. Nice. Friends, what did Alex Van know? Halen? Did he use gaff tape or duct tape? He used uh, the. And he would do a triangle. It's gaff, and he would do it under the snare head, I believe. Yeah. Like on mm -hmm. the underside, in like a, a specific pattern. Yeah. To get that standard, I mean, that God. all weight snare drum. Yeah. What a recognizable yeah. sound. Yeah, I'd see that too. He'd do it on the underneath of his uh, ride. He'd have little strips underneath his yeah. ride. So Just that to way, deaden him. So that way it wouldn't wash too much. Right? Right. The funny thing is, all he did, he washed his cymbal constantly, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> which is funny. That's it is. Like, I really need to bring this down. Well, now, let me hit it as hard as I can. He really popularized riding on a pasty crash, like yeah. Shh, yeah. a yeah. wall of sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it you just know. keeps going. Yeah. So no air. I love that. So as a result of working with with uh, Cobb, yeah. you, you you've you've adjusted your touch and you have a system of kind of working with each other. And am I also right in saying that there he likes to get full takes, so no yes. Frankensteining. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is we don't use clicks. I mean, most of the time, there's I, I've probably done clicks with him, maybe on five of the records I've done over 20 years. Yeah. Like, um, you know, we always kind of came from the school that, you know, that's what you hired me for. Right. You know, is that, is that I'm going to come in and I'm going to keep time and make sure that we're good. Um, um, you know, with modern recording, it's a, it's, it's a hard thing to compete with because everybody's ears have shifted over to, to perfect time, perfect time and right. perfect and perfect pitch. And it's why computers have come in so much, you know, and I, I, uh, um, you know, and the, it, you know, if I if I knew the secret to this whole thing, I probably wouldn't be a drummer. I'd you know own my own label and and and, yeah. and all that. But sure. I think that 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 you know it's a it's a it's a form of recording that that has all but died in L.A. Uh, but that's why we call Nashville the Alamo because it's kind of the last bastion for live players. Yes. And, and and so cutting that way is really fun. It's really freeing songs can breathe and all that stuff but when you when you and then when you listen to it back and it breathes in all the right places and every player on the floor is moving as an organism and nothing really sticks out you know it's like so satisfying but you know sometimes even after all these years of experience um it's something about having that thing to lean on even if you swim around it absolutely you know what i mean again just like just like symbols i am not an anti click guy in yeah. any way shape or yeah. form i i uh um i was just cutting a record with my brother and and um and we have click on some stuff click not on other stuff and it, it's a it's the idea that 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 if you feel that you need it because the drummer opposed to popular belief has the ability uh, the the other players have the ability to shift the tempo you know drummers can do as much as they can yeah. but drummers more than anybody in the band, it's it's such a communal instrument. We're following everybody in the band and, and the, leading. Yes, and if the guitar player is pushing and it's starting to sound weird, we're going to follow that. Yes, and gradually move the tempo up so that way everybody's followed, that everybody's good. Yeah, and it's kind of like being the catcher on a baseball team. We're 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 here to make sure the entire unit is moving as one, and so we will shift. We will uh, p other people control the tempo. And so that being said, if you have a tune like that, well, then you bring a click in yeah. for no other reason than to, you know, have a backdrop that yeah. everybody's like, why do you keep speeding up? <laughs> you can go listen. <laughs> and we're all responsible for this, man. And you know, what? in some modern recording, like we have this one new song that might be a, a, a single, but it is, 
at 96 BPM. So the verses sound good at 96 BPM, but when that chorus kicks yes. in, it drags like a mother. Yeah, that's but right. <laughs> there's a shaker and a tambourine that are and keyboards that are going to front of house. So I can't like 1970 move the chorus up. Yes. I have to lock it down to 96. So what it really needs would be a tempo map. A tempo map if you're if you're going to a click or <laughs> Like we do in the studio, you just say screw. But if you're if you're running background tracks, you can't do yeah. that. You can't you can't do that if you're running background. Tracks. Yeah. So then we so then when we play live, sometimes acoustically, Aldine will be like, "Is that the same tempo?" Is like I'm like it is, <laughs> but we're playing without a click. And if the band is m pushing that chorus like we naturally want, want to, to do instinctually, that's right. It's our God given yeah. <laughs> ability. It's like I can't. I can only do so much. That's right. We're moving as an organism. That's right. right? Man. But when then we sit down with the Pro Tools tracks, and there's that that chorus comes. It's like we cannot budge because yeah. Deca 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 is going now, out front. Now it's really gonna, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody so, will know. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Do you man. think ever it'll get back to being like intrinsically human again without any of that stuff? Well, I think always in Americana and Roots idiom, it's you know the way they're doing it is that's not going to go away. I yeah, think. yeah. I, I think I think it's always going to be cut down the middle. You're going to have bands that that refuse to run tracks, refuse to play to click tracks. And then you're right. going to have other bands that will never play without, but it. even recording with click tracks, you know, that's the human element. Well, it. I think, and, and forgive me for all, you know, to all the producers and everybody, but I will say, I think a lot of it comes from laziness because of the Frankensteining. Sure. So if you run a track and you say one, two, three, four, let's go. And it gets to that click. Well, the singer only has to sing it once. Yeah. And then you can just keep playing to that and keep looping that through, get the right track for everybody and be done with it. Whereas if the whole band has to cut the tune, everybody's got to be on, everybody's got to be right, you know? And so, so I think, you know, as a producer, I think that, that you'd have to look at your band, make sure everybody's playing the right thing. If one person's not, you might think about putting it to a click. So that way, you know, that you can, Cut. Take it overdub. You later. can overdub yeah. somebody else later. Somebody can get cut. You know. You know. Obviously, without them knowing. You know. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I'm, but I mean, but, that's why they spent so much time in the studio back in the seventies and eighties. That's mean, right. Everybody yeah. had to get the take. So right. So recently, I mean, I, I I won't mention their name, but we've worked with them a million times. Guitar player, high level guitar player on mm -hmm. a million records. One of the most recorded guitar players of our generation. And we end up on this session together and I'm kind of point guy with the artist. They come in from out of town. We got a double session. So a total of six hours. He wants to get six tracks. We only ended up getting four yeah. because this guitar player said, you know what? Certain feels like the six, eight, the old R and B like, oh, God, this, yeah, you know, if you don't know me by now, kind of mm -hmm. a thing yes, yeah. is one of the most challenging feels I love think you would it. agree to play, but oh, when it's done, it's done so yeah, well. It's really good. And it yeah. doesn't always work really great with a click. Mm. I, I think rarely it would work. So with a click. this guitar yeah. player says, we might not get six songs, but we're going to get this one. It's going to take a little <laughs> bit longer, but it's going to be so satisfying. And I think it's going to be worth it. So yeah. everybody had to have a perfect. And it took about eight times That's going right. and it ate up, go. it ate up that hour and a half. Yeah. But then we listened back to it and I'm like, wow, that really is. Feels good. There's yeah. much more humanity in that. There you you know what I mean? So, and, and it's funny because a, a beat like that for a drummer is painful. I mean, that's, it's a, those two extra beats. Oh, really? Yeah. You gotta, you know, I, I yeah. love it. I love the uncomfortableness, the, the anticipation in between beats is like, yeah, I think that's where the angst comes from. That's where the, that's where the pain comes from because you're not going <clears> to <throat> hear a slow six eight and it's like a joyful happy song, right? Yeah. So it's supposed to feel longing and hurting, anxious. And, and anxious. The, the yeah. pain between beats three and four and six and one. Yes, right. <laughs> that's what. It is. And don't rush to get to that between six and one. No, yeah. no, and and that's uh, you know I I mean that's the art, that's the feel, that's the love of of what we do that most people don't. They'll hear the song and go, that feels good. Yeah. But then you have people that play, all of us, you know, we'll listen to it and go, that was hard. Yeah. But uh, that feels good. You know, it's yeah. like, that's where that's at. And and uh, that's why I love it. I mean, that's the fun of it right there is the, is the, uh, the angst that you can create, 
you know, just with a just with sticks is yeah. really really intense. Well, we have the most uh, an instrument that has the most power to shape the vibe, energy, personality <clears throat> of a song. What's yeah, a spaceship? We really do. It's just the most important part of the song. I mean, it really, you got, it really you're going to want that backbeat and it's got to right. be in the right spot. So you're a brilliant song drummer. Like if you look up song drummer in the dictionary, Marion Webster, there's a picture of Chris. Oh, and oh, he's, you know, really he's neat. got I've the never, beard and I everything. I look at that. That's new. <laughs> and your wife submitted it. Oh, oh you're, oh, you're oh, in Marion oh, Webster. I don't doubt that. Um, no. But yeah. so, so the kind of drumming you do, who were the big influences early on? Are they complete? The people that you respect and admire now, were they the same guys no, when no, you were a child? Of course not. Yeah, no. I mean, I started playing when I was 13 years old. So. Right. We're talking and, like Neil Peart? Yeah. You know, I'm looking at Neil Peart. I'm looking at... I'm looking at... Uh, Stuart? Uh, uh, Stuart, uh, Stuart Copeland. I'm looking at... at uh, um, oh, see? See? Terrible with names. <laughs> uh, uh, who's... <laughs> we're here to help. We're here to help. <laughs> well, perfect. I'm really glad you guys are supporting me here. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I'll tell you this. The truth of it, I was looking at any mainstream drummer at the time and, ha you know, the song, because I wasn't, I wasn't an evolved player. I was just a, that's, I mean, I started playing because my, my brother was a guitar player and wanted me to play bass. And then I looked at MTV and saw a guy behind this tank. And I was like, that's, that's where I need to be. Isn't I mean, that crazy? Yeah. I want to think that's for all of us. Yeah. I want, I see this tank and it's like this, it, like you can drive that yeah. thing. And so I was, you know, I was, looking at all, I was looking at White Snake, and I was looking at all these bands. Damn, that, yeah, we're just like, are you kidding me? And then as it progressed, uh, I think my influences stopped being drummers at that point. Yeah. You know, I started looking. Well, I and and to like going up to my playing now, I'd say Dave Cobb, uh, Leroy Powell, uh, uh, and 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 a lot of these people I've played with yes. have become my biggest influences mm. because drumming is a, like I said, is a communal instrument. It's not a, like, I love Steve Gadd, you know, I love Hal Blaine. I love these guys, but they didn't write these songs. What they did is they came in and they added to the idea of the song, making it this wonderful, beautiful thing. They didn't write these tunes. I mean, know? Steve Gadd should have publishing on 50 ways, but it's, it'll never happen. I agree. I, I, Absolutely, one hundred percent agree. But uh, you know, what is what is his opinion on it? You know, I think Steve Gadd's doing all right. Yeah, I mean, I think. Yeah, I think. I mean, he's not. The thing is, is as you and I know that even at the highest level, say you're one of the most recorded drummers in history, so you're Steve Gadd, and you yes. go between James Taylor, Eric Clapton, Carol King, and whoever the yeah. Gadd Gang. He's yeah. you know, he's got four or five gigs that he can rotate between. He, he say his day rate is two thousand dollars a day. Yep. Four hot meals, uh, drum tech, four That's seasons. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's everything. Fucking, it's everything fucking you great. Could your own bus, everything you could possibly need. But it's not like when you write a hit song, that check comes in for three hundred grand in one. Steve yeah. Gadd's got to do a lot of gigs to make three hundred grand. I agree. So, yeah. so you know, it's kind of it, it goes into that whole, you know, why don't why doesn't the band always get a Grammy when the song wins a Grammy or when, the, you know, it, it gets into that whole thing. Like why would the manager get a Grammy and the, and the guy that played on it doesn't, the drummer you know? didn't. Yeah. That's right. So, <laughs> so that's the nature of our business. You know, yeah. I, I think that we're progressing because it used to be like, we love the old, the old albums, anything from the forties, fifties, sixties. We'll try and find who played drums on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like they didn't even list who the drummer was back then. Ouch. At yeah. least now you can go, oh, that's who played on that. Yeah. But the funny thing is, even back then, the big band numbers, ha uh, drummers had big names. Buddy Riches, Louis Belson, oh, uh, Gene Krupa, Krupa, Krupa. Yeah. you know what I mean? They, yeah, they, man. They yeah. Were huge. Because everybody was fascinated with the drummer back then because the, the whole uh, concept of a trap kit mm -hmm. was semi-new. You know? Yeah, well, who was it? Uh, uh, was it Chick 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 Webb? Chick Webb. Oh my gosh! I yeah. mean, listening to, you know, he was the band leader. Yeah. Z Zudi Singleton, and then there was Mel Lewis, and yeah. then you had the Cozy Cole. And so, did you go through like a like a big band to, uh, like a to stage? This, to this day, it's my one of my favorite music. So, really? Uh, oh, oh my gosh! It's big band music to me is. Like if I'm just sitting at home, I have big band records. That's what I. That's what I listen to. This, I listen, I'm glad I'm I bringing listen, this up. I listen to Chick Webb. I listen yeah. to because these bands were the 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 movement. Like you couldn't go off into La La Land because you had these massive parts happening with six different people. 
you know, doing one part and five doing this part. So you couldn't just lollygag off over here. And, no, you, know, right? you do realize that your visual brand does not match that. You know, I, you know, I, I don't hear big band when so, I look at you. So I hear. I, da, 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 da. Yeah. So I will tell you this right now. So I just recently saw. So, <laughs> what was that, Jim? <laughs> he's, a, he's got a Harley look to him. Oh, you know? Was that listen, bad to the bone? Listen, yeah. I, 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 I get that a lot. I've gotten that my <laughs> whole career. Do you ride? Do you ride? I, I, no, I okay. don't even, I don't even, you know, I, no. You ride it up, maybe an electric bike? Is yeah, no. <laughs> I have I have a really souped up moped at home and and I only jump it. That's all that's all I do. You're you're a hybrid guy, um, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Well I so my most recent gig, uh uh, uh I started going out live. Um uh I first started doing his records uh, maybe four years ago. And uh and it's Chris Isaac, by the way. The, the, oh nice. Yeah, yeah, Chris oh, yeah. Isaac. Well, Chris I went in to audition for his live band because he needed somebody to to fill in, right? And so I showed up to this audition. I flew to L.A., showed up to this audition looking the way I do. And uh, Chris said, absolutely not. <laughs> Based completely on your look. He did. He did not take me. And so about three months later, he came to Nashville to cut some stuff on his and new record. And there you are on the drums. And I'm just on the, I just got called for the gig. So I'm in there and I'm like, Oh, hey, yeah, I know. And he looked at me and was like, hey, you know, and then I played and it was this really down because we've been talking about how quiet, you know, and he came up to me and said, I am so sorry. I didn't. I totally judged you yeah. by how you I apologize. And then here we are three years later and he just asked me to be on tour with him now. Nice. And so now I'm out. There. And of course, it's all suit. You know, I. I can't you wear fit it for a suit. Yes, I got to do the suit thing, which is awesome and I love. And even though playing with those jackets is really tough because hey, the sticks get cut. If I got to have a jacket on, I got to have some air blowing on me, man. Yeah. Well, I have to have air either way. Just, That's just because what it, a difference it makes. Well, it and it looks terrible if if the wind's not brushing through my beard that sideways. It doesn't yeah. look right. To me. Yeah. You know the funny so thing now is you're you get to do that iconic song with him. The, yeah. Did you it's say hey, listen? Game and when, I, when I first met you, what you did was kind of wicked game. Sorry, that was yeah, really good. Was such a uh, I'll, joke. I'll see myself. Is there, no, a, no, no, is there no. a simul crash on there, buddy? <laughs> that was Find really it. good. Really Thank good. You. Thank you. I'm sure you've never. So now you're playing with him. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, I'm filling in. I'm yeah. filling in for his drummer, who's who's taking a break. He's doing his thing, and 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 uh, and he's been with him for 40 years. Wow. You know, and it's like uh, that's it's the time, thing. It's time that's for why, a change. That's why I was asking you. <laughs> that's why. No, no, no. That's why I was asking you about about your gig about yeah. how incredible it is. Yeah. When you get people uh, uh, like Mike Kennedy, you know, who, who, um, I mean, he was with that gig for 40 years. From Jim, uh, uh, George Strait? Yeah. Yeah. George Strait for 40 years before, sadly, he passed. But, he, but that is, to me, I think to everybody, how incredible is that? And you're living that. I think it's relate. It's re it's a combination of of being performance based. Like you can never mail it in. You always have to ex execute it at a high level. But yeah. there's also there's this there's this friendship and there's this comfort and this reliability. Where like whenever Aldine's got to do a television show and there's like a house band or he has to play the he's like we're never playing the Opry without my band without the band. Of course, yeah, because there's a comfort level for yeah. him. But for the players, who in music gets that security? Like, it's crazy. That and it's, and there's an element of loyalty. It's like there's a commitment there that yes. comes from the relationship and it's, you know, comes with a good attitude because mm -hmm. everyone's got the skill and a hunger to succeed. Well, yeah, yes. there's a, well, I will say <laughs> this, I will say this and there's somebody and I won't, I won't mention names, but they talk about how annoyed they are and they call them band jumpers. This is a big thing in, in the industry, right? So you have a guitar player, a drummer, a bass player, doesn't matter. That goes, okay, I have this gig right now, but then so-and-so just showed up and offered me a hundred bucks more a gig. I'm going to go over there. Yeah. Or this person offered me this, 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 right? Mm. And they call them band jumpers. Oh, it's so yeah. annoying to this guy. It's, oh, it's so annoying. And then I go, okay, well, what about that guy that goes, no, I won't jump that gig because I'm going to be a loyalist to this guy. Yeah. And three years later, they go, oh, eh, I feel like changing it up. I'm going to change my whole band, my whole sound. I'm good. Well, yeah. I'm like, well, what about that? What, 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 what about you can so, bake that down to corporate America? Well, that happens a you lot, know? and it happens a lot, and especially really. with sorry ladies, 
you female singers, you change bands like underwear. It's true. Yeah. And that sucks. That's yeah. like, I mean, I, I, you know, listen, artists can do whatever they want. Yeah. But to me, they're all artists. And and you got a bass player out there who who just bought a house and has a mortgage and is like, okay, well, I'm good right now. And then the singer decides, oh, well, I'm going to change. Ba- that That's awful. That sucks. Well, that, I mean, that's something that um, it's almost like some of these artists uh, need to understand that, yeah, you're an artist. You got to be, be creative, but you're also the CEO of your company. That's right. You know, and you have CEO is pretty much the, the chief culture enforcement officer, you yeah. know, and they're kind of like, I believe any, a lot of CEOs with the weight they carry on their shoulders and decisions they have to make. Part of the big responsibility is developing a culture, a, a good, healthy one. A healthy one. You know one. what I mean? Yeah, that's... And that's... that's uh, hard. Because you're going to get a culture, good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah, but I also think the problem with that is managers. And sorry, well, to, all, people, sorry, to, sorry to all the great managers. Managers can really soil but, the waters. But managers, yeah. I mean, I, it seems to me that their primary job when they come in is to isolate the artist from the band because you don't want that kind of commitment. Right. Because they want to be able to change that band anytime they... They need to, whether they can find somebody cheaper, whether they can find somebody quote unquote better. It's a like, that's the idea. But I mean, listen, we're in the entertainment business. And, and like I was saying to you guys before, it's such a cutthroat business either way. It, yeah. It's kind of like, you know, even, and I guess, do you know that going into it? I think when, so. When you guys, you know, decided so, to pursue this. But that's the hard part, right? right. So that's like, if you're a people <clears throat> person. You know, you're a total people person. So yeah. you go in and you become friends with these people. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're not, or more than friends, you become family. I've had gigs where their kids are calling me Uncle Chris. Yes, yeah, so I'm Uncle Rich. Right? Yeah. Yep. And I mean, like that, it's gone. Yeah. It's, it's, you get a phone call and that says, eh, we're doing something else next year. Ouch. That hurts, mm-hmm. right? Hurts. That, that's a, that's a painful process. It's almost like a breakup, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, uh, you know, luckily I, you know, luckily I, I had a lot of side options, you know, but, yeah. I, <laughs> but it was totally. still, that's painful because this is a family to you now, yeah. especially when you've been with somebody for three, four years, five years, and then they just decide on a dime. Now, if they go, it's January and they're like, you know, next year, I think they're thinking about doing something. So, you know, I know I pulled you away from every session you have. I know I pulled you away from what, another gig you could have had. So I'm going to give you about a year or I'll give you six months to like any other job, right? Yeah, they give you a severance. A severance. It's yeah. a time and it's 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 energy where it's not a bad thing. You didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing. We're just going to, we're going to move on. But this is the entertainment business because yeah. in six months, the, the fashion might change. Yeah. So they yeah. can't, they can't make those decisions. It has to be quick. But with that, compensation needs to be there, especially yeah. for, so anyways, the point of it was you call these, you know, band jumpers. Well, it goes the other way also. Yeah. You know, the, the, the band it's, ju- it's, not, it's not a good idea to leave for a hundred dollars more a job, right? And, that, and big, big picture. I don't know. It depends on how the number of shows, right? Of course. If you're getting paid per show, but still, say you add that up and it's like an additional $15,000. Is that worth leaving something where almost all the boxes are check it, checked where, you, you know, it's like the music, the money, and the people, right? Sometimes you get one, sometimes you get two. If you get all three, never leave the job. Yeah, but, he only, yeah. Right? but that's the thing is that even having a salesmanship aspect, which is something we talk about a lot. Oh, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Once somebody comes to the table, Which you're hey, brilliant at, by the way. I do well, I, I, Kevin Murphy calls me a promosexual, so I guess I just. <laughs> well, I, I don't know about that, but I <laughs> but will you know, say, you know, I'm always. He's like you're always promoting something, but at the same time, when you actually show up, everything that you do is at a high level, and well, thank you. So it's almost like a weird compliment sandwich. I mean, I love Kevin. I yeah, I just saw him this weekend. Well, um, I think but, it's it's. It's an energy thing with you. I, I <laughs> no, and 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 I mean that absolutely one hundred percent as a compliment. It's a it's a. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day about you about how the the promotion aspect and the the entrepreneurial aspect of being a musician is something that's lost a lot in and it's needed now. It is yeah. needed more now than it ever has been because, because of the noise. <clears throat> well, because of. There's so many of us and there's so many things. And not only that, um, art has changed. Art is not just art anymore. Now it's the person. And we've learned that with 
a lot of artists that have come out. Yeah. Quote unquote artists that have come out lately. It isn't about the music. Yeah. In fact, I can't name w- one song from some of these people, but I know who they are because yeah. they have a story. And I think that that should happen for musicians as well, mm. for for individual players, for people that look, they have a story, they have something aside from this. They they have lives too. They're not just yeah. people in a cage right. that they lock up and then you come out and they're great, you know? Because yeah. everybody at this level is great, I think. Yeah. And I still believe that there's still room for everybody. Yeah. And but you have to weed your way through that that tall you grass. You got to find your place. Yeah. And you, you find your place. You've done that. I mean, oh man! I told my wife that 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 Appreciate I was doing that. your podcast, and that afterwards I was going to ask for a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what? amazing. Well, the thing is, is that you don't have to really shout from a mountaintop, and I don't do it as much because I'm just, in, uh, in all honesty, I'm just sick of myself. You know what I mean? You do that, you, you do that for twenty years, and now it's to the point where it's like I can well, look at a calendar. Please don't be. And it's please well, don't I appreciate be. It. No, Thank be, you. please don't be because. It inspires a lot of other players <laughs> to go, hey, look, l- I mean, look, look at what he's doing. Look at what he's talking about. Look at what I can do that. Yeah. I think, in fact, I can do this and which is great. And then and it inspires well, people I really appreciate to that. move forward yeah. because it's like a lot no of one's people, ever told him this before. It's a lot, yeah. Yeah. And it's weird, right? I don't, yeah. I, I can see his head getting bigger. It's weird. No, no, it's, <laughs> no, it's, 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 no, it's not that. It's that he's like, it's, it's, it's like you telling your wife she's beautiful. Yeah. And it doesn't matter until she gets hit on at the grocery store. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, cause he and I have been, you know, friends for going on 18 years now. Yeah. I tell him these things all the time. Oh, okay. And it's like, well, dude, look, dude, you have a great yeah. amount of knowledge and inspiration to share. You need to do it. Very good. Know? And, and it's, uh, I don't know. Well, but what I like about Chris, uh, thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate that. What I like about you is that you've got a thing. It's sought after and it's undeniable now. So literally you can look at that calendar, that I calendar. I got 12 months of, of white Right. And all of a sudden it just looks like Folgers spilled all over the place because you have enough relationships and you have this body of work where like, I want that guy. I want that guy. I want that guy. It's like, all right, this week is the Oak Ridge Boys and this week is Dave Cobb and this is a new, then I'm, maybe you have a home tracking thing, you know? So yeah. you're always busy doing the thing. Because, because I think becoming a personality, like I said before, yeah. playing is just what, how we got our foot in the door. Yeah. Now you're to become a personality to help others I mean, through anything, right? Helping others is going to be the biggest, yeah. You know, reward, I guess, uh, uh, both financially and spiritually, right? So, I think for you, it's it's it, that's probably what's happening is yeah. that it's 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 that idea that you were you were a great drummer, got in, you did your thing, you you paid your dues, quote unquote, oh right? With, with with all that, like like we all do right yeah but you have something that others don't and, and you have a personality and an energy mm. that can build others and help others and move and, and i mean i say all this i don't want to pick out curtains or anything i just i just you know i just i just think that 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 you know yeah. moving that forward and helping yeah. others is 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 the key i mean that's and by the way, that's not me talking. It's my wife. She's the one taught me this. Thank you. I can't because, wait to meet. I can't yeah, wait to meet her. Yeah, because she's brilliant. She's yeah. the one that came up with the whole, with our whole business idea. Does she do your that. website, Chris Paul and Drums? And all of course that? she does. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, now, so, yeah. so, so, my other interests are, you know, I tell everybody my purpose in life is to affect people in a positive way and change lives. Yes, I know that you can do that through entertainment. I know you can do that through education. Very much. What are your interests for the future? What are your side hustles? What are your things that you're passionate about? Uh. Well, I, uh, the biggest thing is the, is the company that my wife and I Tell us about that, yeah. came up. Uh, we have an autistic son and he is amazing and he's high functioning autistic ADHD. And we, how old is he? And he's 12. Mm-hmm. And we went through a absolute storm with mm-hmm. him trying to figure out uh, how to raise him and how to deal with it. Cause we have another son who, who grew up normal, very, very, very uh, a, a, a normal kid, absolutely brilliant, doing his whole thing. He was, you know, did, did his thing. And then, and then we had our, our youngest who, who, uh, who threw us for a loop. We didn't know how to, to deal, but, but so much so that he couldn't go to school and all the different stuff. Anyways, uh, um, through that, we found that it was needed in the world to bring families together who had autistic, ADHD, um, neurodistinct 
children. And um, so we came up with Mad Charlie Inc. And uh, Mad Charlie Inc. is a, it's a company to, it's, it's illuminating neurodiversity culture. It's bringing families together. It's, it's, it's grabbing supports for anybody that needs it in that world because it's so isolating. Yes. For anybody that has anybody in their family with, with uh, um, neurodistinct uh, uh, family members. Now, who's Charlie? Is that your son? Charlie is my son. Okay, so yeah. he's so why mad? He because even from a little baby, I used to call him the angry little man. <laughs> he was mad. He was mad when good things happened. He was mad when bad things happened. He was mad when strange things happened. Anything that scared him, anything that he got excited about, he was always mad. He's just mad. He's mad at everything. Yeah. And I was like, he's going to be a drummer, right? Was, <laughs> but no. He was autistic. He was ADHD, and we didn't know it. We didn't know it. So we would go through, and we, ah, he'll grow out of it. He'll grow out of yeah, it. How do you get that diagnosis? Well, uh, uh, over time, just built up and vetting all the right people. And thank goodness I have my wife, who is brilliant, because I'm on the road. I'm on the road, and I'm playing, and I'm doing sessions, and I'm living this life that we all chose, yeah. or that chose us, rather. And, yeah. and, 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 and we're going through everything. And so it was her that had to be there to vet these people. And luckily she's a brilliant researcher. She's a brilliant person. That Is that her trade, a trade or as a researcher? Is no, she, she was, uh, 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 um, she ran optical, uh, businesses and, and, and I mean, just always very bright. So yeah. anybody, anybody that's, 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 that's good at that is good at everything, right? They're, they're really great at, 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 at adapting, to a situation, which is what she's brilliant at, right? So, so she came up with this whole whole uh, um, idea of building this company, and and together, you know, I always say I'm more of an idea guy. Yeah. <laughs> you have the ideas, and she implements. She's the implementer, and yeah. she's the one yep. that spends months and months researching and doing it, and, mm -hmm. and 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 created this company, and now it's 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 all over Middle Tennessee, and it's we're great. trying and we're trying to build it. Uh, 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 she's working. Uh, with Marsha Blackburn now to to uh, get legislation to help. That's heavy. To help uh, um, uh, neurodistinct kids and and neurodistinct families. We yeah. Because because they need help. They they need to not be isolated. They need to not have to explain themselves. They have so to have much. a community where you can like minded yes, individuals. That's right. Yeah. And it's and it's and it's wonderful. You were you were talking about somebody you had on right the other day that 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 that, that, that or is it just a friend of yours? No, no, I've had him on my podcast, uh, the mostly Middle Tennessee business podcast. Go check it out, mmtbp.com. Um <laughs> no plugs cheap, or cheap plug or anything. Promosexual. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that term you know, is it's just crazy, right? It's pretty funny. It, it yeah. makes my legs tingle. Go ahead. He's got a, it's called Jacob's Audible. And every week or every, every year rather in April when it's Autism Awareness Month, he'll walk the entirety of the Natchez, Natchez Trace Parkway, 444 miles. And actually, hold on. Yeah, I met him the other day at yeah. uh, the Impact Effect um, convention. Yep. So nice he uh, has these hats. Four four four. Oh, that's awesome! That's and, great. Uh, it's it gets a lot of conversations going. Yeah, I mean, I have a black version of this hat, and what does the four 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 mean? That's great, great. It's a, it's a, it's brilliant a great conversation marketing. starter. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love it. I love it. That's and, amazing. Uh, he's in his third year. He's. It was funny because uh, at that event last week that you and I were at Mr. Jim's event, the yes. Impact Event, Impact Effect dot com. Um, he, uh, Brad Michel, who's the proprietor of the nonprofit, was thinking about just taking it in Nashville. And doing 444 miles around Nashville. And I'm like, dude, it's a huge mistake. Well, was, why is that? I said, because you're in your, you're going into your fourth year doing this. Now you're getting traction. This is when, you know, the news channels, regional news outlets will probably reach out to, to get you on board and mm -hmm. maybe Good Morning America, maybe some of these regional places. And eventually I said, a year five, then Oprah comes calling. I said, you're almost there. He was about to just do it around Nashville. I said, no, people in Natchez Trace look forward to you now. Yeah. You know, right. you're, you're a, you're a, an annual thing. That's you know, right. Keep, keep it up. I keep love it. it. Up. So. Yeah, like the Music City Drum Show. It's like these guys get a crazy idea to do something. Before you know it, it's the second year, and then it's the third year, and then it's the fourth year, and now you're just Boom. an institution. You know? Yeah. Well, I don't even know what that is. So, so we have a uh, we have a drum show that happens at the fairgrounds, and it's already Every been happening July. for four years now. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, a drum show. Oh, yeah, we have, we have a drum show in Nashville. It's the whole weekend, like the Vegas drum show, the Connecticut drum show, the. If, yeah. uh, as a matter of fact, Rich, if you go to the Mostly Middle Tennessee Business Podcast, mmtbp.com, there's a, a special um, 
He's really good at this. You know. He was in radio. <laughs> oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a special grouping of uh, bonus episodes that I did yeah. from the drum show. From the drum show. Yeah. yeah it's you, nothing, you know, you could actually hear us speak because the entire place is nothing but a cacophony yeah. of, of people playing so and beating on stuff. Is it, is it all types of drumming or yeah. is it just drum players? It's all drum players. outlets. There's clinics. There's uh, giveaways, raffles. It's like a it's mini fun. NAM just for drums. Yeah. And like one year I was supposed to do a... Ray Luzier did a clinic. I was supposed to do one, but we had to do a makeup date in Connecticut. So Jim Riley did a clinic for me. So, but the only the suggestion I can make on that stuff is that when they're doing the educational events, they need to put, put a moratorium on all the other playing at the booths. Yeah, like, yeah because when the clinic is happening, no playing. Yeah, we used know? to have a uh, we used to have a, a music store in my hometown. Yeah, called called Sliger's Music. Yeah, is it still there? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's still there, and. I was a drummer and I showed, and every time you walked into this place, I'll never forget it. There's all the instruments, all the stuff. And then there was the drum room and there was a huge sign that said, do not play the drums. <laughs> yeah. What's the point? And it's a drum shop. <laughs> and yeah. it was, and I always thought, all right, that's the, that's the world I'm, I'm choosing to go into right that here. Is totally Don't even look at not them. play the drums. And yeah. I was like, yeah, we had. We, you know what? I'm going to play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> we had the. Are they telling you? Telling us in general? Yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> or here, seriously. That reminds me of a one in the early days of Al Dean. You know, we have our guitar player Kurt Allison. I've been playing with the guy for 27 years. Um, there, we were opening for Pat Green at a club in Florida. Yeah, and whoever the drummer was at the time had this gigantic, gorgeous high dollar road case, and it said, "Don't even think about it." No drinks, no sitting. So Kurt just pops his ass up oh, on that thing, just sat on the case. There, there it is, man. That's the that's the and that's the nature of being a musician, right there. It's like, oh, I can't do that, huh? Rebellious. <laughs> yeah, man. We had the Long Island Drum Center. You ever hear of them? It, I, I think big. they're still around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first experience. Actually, no, the, the first experience of me being able to actually sit down and play a drum kit in the music store was Sam Ash in White Plains, New York. Oh, yeah. there you go. And uh, then we, we used to go to Manny's in Manhattan, sure. which had a great drum area. And then Long Island Drum Center had all the really good kits that yeah. you could play. Yeah. And because uh, where we grew up, the East Coast Music Mall, you couldn't play them. Got it. They're right. from Connecticut. I'm yeah. from Connecticut. So we have like, the, oh. you know. The, yeah. East Coast yeah. Music Mall was a staple. Now, you ever hear of Ed Roman guitars? No. No. Okay. No. No, he was uh, he he was um, he had a TV show for a while. We don't Vegas. get out, Jim. I mean, I'm on a bus. He's in a studio. Yeah, we, that's his. You know, we don't, yeah. I don't usually see the sun most of the time. That's why I'm so excited. <laughs> you guys actually have a window. It's really I amazing. Know. <laughs> he, um, what I was going to say was uh, Mad and Mad Charlie Inc. What's the best way to go? Is there a www? Yep, MadCharlieInc.com. Man, nice. you just you just go right there and and. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a ton of stuff going on, and and just just read the first page yeah. is all anybody needs to do, and they'll understand what it is and what's going on. And and uh, um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a great movement, and I hope that it. It's gets amazing traction. to have a cause, and it's really personal to you. I thought about doing some sort of a um, some sort of a foundation or a nonprofit, something that maybe would be centered around music education, because I think music education is so important, and especially in the sense that it's dying such a quick death. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You know, I, I mean all of them. All of them. All, all, Any of the arts. I, I, I'm not even arts. I, I, I woodworking, uh, uh, auto shop. Welding. Auto body, welding, auto body. All the trades. I took electronics in high school. Try and yeah. find that now. Like you, you. Yeah. They're making a comeback though. Are a they? lot of the trades are making, and thank you to Mike Rowe. Yes, Dirty Mike Rowe's Jobs. doing a great job with He's that. really, be, yeah. you know, a lot of kids. I, yeah, I, I saw that. I love yeah. that. And who's the comedian also? Um, uh, there's a comedian. Adam Carolla. He was, he was a tradesman. Uh, uh, wood. The woodworking comedian. Uh, uh, um, see, terrible with names. A no, woodworking I, I, comedian. Yeah, he Ugh. is. Uh, he is hilarious. Uh, he's on uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, oh, uh, really oh, dry, gosh, uh, dry, um, funny. Ron Swanson's. Right. Yes. There you go. Yes. Actor. Yes. Yeah. His. If you ever watch, he's got a show where he brings in people and he teaches them the old ways of carpentry. I can totally yeah. see that. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just phenomenal. He's got no power tools. He's showing people the art of woodworking, which, by the way, I think is one of the most noble jobs in the world. Yeah. You know, that, doctor, and, you know, drummer are the three <laughs> most noble jobs in the world, yeah. you know. Uh, Nick Offerman. Um, there you Nick go. Offerman. Nick Offerman, yeah. Thank you so much. 
uh, I think it's incredible to bring these because right now, let's face it, it's really getting bad that everybody wants to wear a suit and sit in a in a cubicle. It's I don't funny. Un- it's, I don't understand that. The it's tides like, have turned. Back when we were growing up, that was like the furthest thing that we were trying to do is stay yeah. away from a cubicle. Yeah. Yeah. And now that's what everybody's going. Well, for. everybody now wants to be an influencer or a YouTuber. That's the next generation. Well, that's true. That's true. But, which, which unfortunately is just like the music business. Yeah. They're as fast as you made is as fast as you're gone. Yeah. And then what? Right. There are people out there in the electrical field, especially who are there. They got huge followings on Instagram, massive TikTok, huge followings. Do it yourself channels. And not, stuff. not just do it yourself. They're setting up, you know, Hey, they, they put a camera behind them and they let it run while they're, you know, wiring up a panel while they're working. Yeah. yeah. And it's like they 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 put it on time compress and do a, a time lapse on it. Love it. And it's fascinating to watch. Wow. Because when you do it, when you wire up a panel it's, and you do it well, it's, it's like it's like an art form. It's, it's intense. It really is. And uh, no, that's it's making a comeback. Yeah. Well, building a you chair. Know? I mean, building a table. Yeah. Uh, 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 framing a house. All that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I mean, taking the dent out of a car. Yep. It, it, all these are art forms. These are amazing. Dude, it's funny that we've got into hard art forms and they're great. Our business here, we just got into the garage door business, incredibledoors.com. Check us out, incredibledoors.com. Tim, you're on a roll today, bud. Uh, 931 348 door. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm writing that down. That's yeah. right. So if you need garage door help, you can call us at incredibledoors.com. Uh, but even just studying up on that trade, it's funny to see how many Facebook groups are just for garage door guys. Wow. And it's like there's like, you know, walls of shame Facebook groups where they make, they, you know, flame each other. Oh, that's terrible. You know, can you believe I came across this? He used a 12 inch radius as opposed to a 15 inch radius. Can you believe? You know, and it's but like, what? I, there, it, there is an art form to all these things. And that's why I'm the first, pr- when someone does something well and they do it in a timely manner with a firm hand and a smile on their face like guy some guy that is plunging your toilet somebody that it is wiring your motion lights on the side of your house all art forms yeah they yeah. can't i can't do what they do i this guy was magic with the toilet he's you know what i mean like i i can't do that i mean even while i was using it it was, fixing, it was amazing how he was fixing but, that thing he can't play the drums no he can't you well know, or maybe he can probably with their hobby than us. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, when you think he about, he just didn't have the face for when it. We sit you down know. and we and we and we're we're putting four limbs together, and there's this connection between the head and the heart, and 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 our what we do is the foundation for someone to tell a story about love and loss and lust and heartache, and with it's amazing. Yeah, when well, I, I mean, I was an electrician, it. an electrician's apprentice once upon a time, yeah. and I played the drums. I mean, you know, no, I'm just saying. But yeah. um, which one? Which one do you think was harder? Yeah. What's that? Uh, between electrician and drums. Well, I mean, drums was a natural fit for me. Yeah. Elect- learning the trade of electrical was very helpful. You know, at the time I was your drumming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How, how's that? I was uh, just curious. Electric drum. No, uh, <laughs> no, just le- being. You know, having the day job as an electrical apprentice, I was never a formalized electrician or a okay. journeyman. But I learned enough to like I can go in and assess outlet switches with your own home now which is what my is own home so or even important even what we do here with lighting and stuff like that or I mean, even and maybe at my house next week yes. possibly <laughs> possibly get on the books he has, yeah he's got between 10 and 1 p.m yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. on the monday okay that's right is that, but the thing, <clears throat> so now you're more in the studio than on the road but you said you might you were playing with chris isaac you're yeah. doing something what is your go-to gear that's uh, in the trailer or on the bay of the bus or on the, uh, you know, back line? What will you do when you're on the road? Go to. So the road, I use a, I use a Deco Ludwig out on the road just because it's, it's great. And, 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 and I think that the, that the, the Ludwigs I find have a real personality to them. Each one is oh, yeah. different and, and, and it's fun, but, but I kind of tune every kit very seventies. So everything's very dead. And, uh, um, um, and I, I think it leaves you a lot of room. Yeah. You know, instead of just hitting that tom and then having to wait, it dies very quick. And yeah. so, 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 so you can get some real good fills in, and then, yeah. and then, and then leave it alone. Um, um, I still, I still use just just four piece kit, just a normal. I love four piece, just man. standard four piece. I love four pieces. I went to four piece because I, I think you know anything with a six piece kit. You know, if you can do it with a four piece. And I learned that uh, uh, at the NAM show from Stuart Copeland. Yeah, I actually uh, I sold my double kick pedal when I met Stuart Copeland because because I saw him on a single pedal against Dave Lombardo, 
at a ham show. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Dave Lombardo Stuart. went double cl- double kick, and then right next to him, Stuart Copeland matched everything he did on a single kick. No oh, way. Wow. Because he uses the toe slide heel mm-hmm. technique. Wow. So it's and it was like I saw him do that and I went, you know what? I and I, and I got rid of my double kick. But that's not on any of the police recordings. You would never know he no, has. No, because I mean he's a he's a he's a clinician guy, but he was also super musical and super great. Yeah. So he learned how to do all that stuff. But when it really, I mean, if you think about it all, you know. 75% of the stuff we can do, we've never done yeah. on records or live or right. anywhere because it's, you're playing, you know, we're not all in dream theater. We're not all yeah. playing for rush. Kataka doom's always going to work. That's it, man. It's the feel. I mean, I've always felt if that's why I've loved Steve Gadd and Hal Blaine and these guys, it's all about the feel. Cause yeah. if we can bring a certain feel to a song, that's what every songwriter is looking for. That's what every, crowd is looking for they want the feel now when it comes drum solo time well then you can twirl your sticks and brrr, and do your fast stuff yeah, yeah. and everybody love which by the way i've noticed that too have you noticed that live like you'll be doing a drum solo and you'll be doing some intricate cool awesome thing and you're sitting there going oh man that is awesome and then you look at the crowd and you're like and everybody goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the like, only yeah. time I do gubbity 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 goes is is at the is the very last trash can ending there of it is. the evening. And it's just huge and fast. Boom. Good night, MFers. Uh, yeah, that's um, it. I love it. <laughs> it's, 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 so, so size wise, a perfect world. Is it 20, 22, or 24? 24. Always me too. Yeah. And it kind of wide open? No. Yeah, you did a lot of muffling. Uh, uh, I I love um, um, like a hospital pillow I'm or something. Totally like that. gonna space on his name, but uh, I love the old '70s country kick drum where it's packed to the gills. Oh yeah, and it's just thud. So that was um, the Hal Blaine of Nashville um, was well, yeah. Yeah, yes, you and I it, both, and he's he did like eighteen thousand recording sessions. Yeah, except, Buddy Harmon. Yeah, yeah, except for you know, you know, he's only really, really uh, attributed to to yeah. you know seven of them because they, yeah. his, his name wasn't on most of them. And you actually have to talk to the people that were there that, yeah. that go, oh yeah, no, that's that's, oh, that's, that's Buddy. Uh, he, Buddy was yeah, always on the yeah, session. That's Buddy. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I love that. I love I love pack drums. I love dead dead drums yeah. i don't love over overtones and what do you pack it like a, like a heavy pillow like abs- head to head absolutely right now the live kit i've got a literally a fur blanket like the big wolf fur blanket yeah faux, faux wolf fur blanket on the inside but sound guys gotta love you because they have so much control they just there. have a dead signal and yep. they can just crank it they do whatever they want yep they can put reverb they can do anything that they want out there um, my monitor guy loves it because it's so simple. It's so easy. Yeah. Um, and you can hit hard and it's not going to, uh, and you can play really soft and it's going to be great. It's really know? smart. So either way. It's really so, smart. So, so dead, dead. And you, you know what I have, what I always bring to sessions is I have one of those Lee Howard Stevens mallet bags, you know, like yep. gigantic. I know. And you yeah. flip it open, and it's it's got all of my weird yep. um, shaker attachments, every brand yes. of plastics and materials, and, and a lot of it never gets used because I just don't get called for that thing. Well, but that's the thing. I mean, but I always bring it. That's why we, <laughs> that's why we charge cartage, even if we bring yeah. our own stuff, because yeah. drummers. I mean, my cars. I was just doing a session yesterday yeah. where, you know, there was a kit which was great. There, there's a kit there. They even had cymbals that worked great. But if you go out to my truck, I got a drum set. I've got congas in there. Yep. I've got a cajon. And I mean, I've got everything that you could need yeah. for a studio of drums in my car. Cause you never know. You might as well. And, and I have the same thing. I got this huge stick bag that weighs, you know, all 70 the weird pounds stuff, yeah. and you, <laughs> and you <laughs> open that thing up and it, you know, you look like a yeah. overachiever. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're totally. Like, a total like, overachiever. What do you need? What do you need? You so, know? and then you ended up playing on some, um, some soundtracks, 50 shades, darker Star is born onward. The eyes of Tammy Faye, Elvis. Yeah. Um, we were talking about, um, 
I think you're giving me this thing. The girl that wears the meat suit, Lady Gaga. Oh, Lady Gaga. Yeah. So you got to record the Star is Born soundtrack with her. What yeah. was that like? Tell us about that. That was awesome. Uh, 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 East West Studio went out there, and and uh, uh, Dave Cobb, uh, again, was was producing. Uh, uh, Brian Allen was on bass, and nice. and uh, uh, Lucas Nelson was was playing guitar, which was awesome. Yeah. And, and uh, Now, didn't his band play on some of the soundtrack as well? So he his band uh, were was the face on the record gotcha. and the whole thing. But that and, drummer was uh, playing your parts. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 mostly. And 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 they're great. They were they were awesome. They were fun. And you know, apparently, they just didn't want my face on the movie. I don't know what that was all about. That, that, I mean, you know, it, it 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 was a little disheartening. But uh, but you know what? What are you gonna do? You so know, so the big song, the big one that uh, they did at the Grammys. The la, 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 la. Yeah, yeah. The la, that's la, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, right. thanks. Yeah. No, well, it was fun. It was a, it was a very L.A., very very Hollywood. Yeah. Um, um, where does Dave Cobb put you up when you go out there? Do you stay in West Hollywood or where? Yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. We stay, you know, we stay at the nice, nice places. Yeah, you know, you know. Because uh, I lived uh, right there on Doheny and Beverly for like yeah. all through the pandemic. Yeah, everything yeah. was closed. It sucked. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I was there during, during the pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> trust, oh, trust me, I know. It was, it was. That was a rough. That was a rough time. Yeah, that was a. So yeah, you're. But you were here for during the pandemic, right? Yeah. Well, much yes. different, much different than in L.A. Yeah. My God. Well, I was on the road with with Brandy Carlisle at the time. Okay. Uh, 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 two thousand and, and and the whole bit. So and that's it, something else to talk about because she is such a it girl. Yeah. She is such an it girl, and mm -hmm. you played on. Um, well, you did Broken Horses with her on SNL, and you yeah. did the, the the joke on the Grammys. Yeah. Yeah. So what is it working with her like in her camp? Oh, it was great. It was yeah. great. The twins uh, 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 are phenomenal, and yeah. and and she was fun, and and uh, they're really down home and 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 cool. They like to treat everything as a family, which was cool. But they they came in. I worked on uh, a record that was kind of dedicated to all her songs before that, um, which was great because I got to work with Chris Christopherson and all these people that were. It was a really fun, fun record to do, uh, and then that's how I met her. Was doing that was like covering her songs, you know, for this thing. And then I did uh, the joke record, which was awesome. And, and, uh, um, uh, Incredible. yeah, it was, it was really fun. Uh, 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 studio was wonderful, you know, cause I, I love the studio because everybody kind of drops their egos and drops their, you know, I always say that, that, that a touring band is like a kingdom. So I call them kingdoms. So 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 you go to different kingdoms. Or they and, call them camps. Yeah, like a kingdom. Yeah, yeah. People call them camps. I literally call them kingdoms. That's beca awesome. Because the singers and everybody, it's like they're the they they really, most of them really believe that they're kings and queens. Kings you know, and, queens, and, and yeah. they're and the, the, this is their these are their disciples. Where they're serfs. That's right. And and so I love going in the studio because there's none of that. It's not not you you don't you don't walk in because usually I do have to say usually. The artist is is the least talented person in the room. When you, <laughs> you know, because you come into these things, and these people are brilliant. I mean, yeah. you have steel guitar players in here that have played on seven thousand records, and they're amazing. And yeah. you have piano players; that they know have, just what to do. Yeah, piano players that have played on every wonderful song you've ever heard. You know, and yeah. and and actually filled in for people that are known to be piano players, but they were the actual, yeah. So anyways, that's why I love being in the studio, you know, all of that stripped away. And then when I went on the road, it was awesome. They were, they, they kind of maintained that thing, which was really cool and really rare yeah. to see a band. Uh, uh, you saw that they weren't yeah, like just hiding it in the studio. They were like, they were that way. And it was very family oriented and it was fun, man. I got to play with a lot of people, got to, got to meet a lot of people. And yeah. And, I mean, um, your cell phone's got to be ripe with um, very important people's cell phone numbers. No, 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 because nobody ever really gave me their <laughs> their numbers or their names. Um, and then, and and there was always a security card in between me and them. I don't be like, know, hey, great job today. I don't session. know why I'm just trying to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a security guard in between. Well, I mean, you see the way I look. People kind of they're put off by this, by this, <clears throat> by the by. I, it, was, it was always weird. No, but I I did get to meet Obama with her because she's she's friends with him and wow. and so we 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 went and did a benefit for him and and uh, which was really awkward because I dressed the way that I dress in every situation. Yeah, and they were like dressed to the nines when they came off the bus, and I was like, what is it? Is this like a suit and tie event? Like what's what's going on? And then yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's the, the president of the United States there. Oh and I was like, oh, hey, hey, man, how are you? <laughs> I shook his hand like, hey, man, what's up? And he kind of looked at me like, 
All right. There you go. <laughs> okay. That's well, amazing. Yeah. So that was fun. And, and, uh, well, that's a great thing about our business, right? Yeah. You, I mean, you know, you cross paths with, with brilliance a lot. I mean, I mean, and, and every walk of life, which is really neat and really fun. And, and, uh, uh, it was actually Obama that was telling me that, that, uh, every president, but two, when they asked him, you know, you're the president of the United States, what would you rather be doing? All of them, but two have said, I, I would love to be like a musician. Did you know that? It's nuts. It's a really funny thing. That, that it, it is. It is a. It, people just think they just they have this perception of the of our life. Yeah, I know, and it's 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 it very rarely what they think yeah. that it is. Because I always say that we would do the gigs for free. It's waiting is what you pay us for. It's all the waiting on the road. That, yes. That's the that's the our playing job. is free. <laughs> the you playing's know, free. We would do that for free. The waiting is the hardest part. It yeah, I really tell you, is. I tell you what, but but the, there's something that is. There's a lot to be said about what you're bringing to the table musically, your vibe, your energy, your personality, because every time you work with someone, that person keeps in touch with you. If you record with them, they ask you to tour with them. If you tour with them, they ask you to record with them. Yeah. And that's an amazing business model. And that's what that was always my, you know what, if I'm bringing energy and a high level of excellence in the studio and I'm a fun person, they're probably going to want to tour with me. Yeah. And if I'm touring with them and I sound like a studio drummer. And you're fun and they you're might, great. And they you're, might ask me to record. That's it. Man. Well, that's the model. Well, it's just, I think it's 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 being, being a great hang is the biggest part. But then being at that level when you're asked to. Yeah. Is the other part. That's I the think, expectation. I've, and, you know, and it, it's also willing to do the things that you have to sacrifice, sacrifice things that you have to sacrifice in order to do this business. I've always said, I tell young players, you know, the, the road to success in this business is not paved with people that weren't good enough. It's paved with the people that didn't want to put in what they had to put in. Mm -hmm. Cause you reach a certain level and you go, you know, I want a house. I want a family. I want to, well, you got to set that aside. I mean, there's so many people that want to do it. Yeah. You have to sacrifice everything or find somebody to be with you that understands that also. Yeah. You know, which, which, which. I mean, know. I didn't buy my first property until I was 36 that's years right. old. That's Most Americans, you know, yeah. much earlier. Yeah. So, and not only that, it's the, it's the, it's the roller coaster of this yeah. business. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you'll have three amazing years and then you'll have three years where you won't get a phone call. It's the <laughs> weirdest thing in the world. And you're sitting there going, did I say something at a party? Like what, what, what happened? Like, how did I get canceled? Yeah. You know, and, and you find out, no, it wasn't that it was that people think you're too expensive or people think that, you know, this or that, and you don't know, or you went on the road. And so, and <laughs> that's what I found out with Brandy. That was the big thing I found out with Brandy. Yeah. I went out with her for four years. I got back to Nashville. Everybody thought I died. Like it was, yeah. like, it was like, it was like, I didn't even exist anymore. I was going and trying then, to find gigs. And, and then how did to, you let people know again that you did exist and that you were doing the same thing I did when I got here? I just started playing again I, accepting every session that came and yeah. and doing demo sessions and doing everything just building and, oh you're in town i didn't know I, I thought you were still out with britain no man I've, I've been off with her for four years <laughs> you know and it's and it's hard and i, I talk to a lot of players like that yeah. that are monsters you know just monster players and they all told me the same thing because i would talk to them and say because i'd be in these sessions with them because dave was always the constant with me dave's yeah. always been one of my greatest friends and greatest champions. and Dude, and, you're his go-to yeah, guy. That's an amazing relationship. He's the sweetest dude yeah. in the world and really cares about people. And that's so rare in this business. Yeah. You know, he, he it's it's not about the money or the fame or that the, he really cares about relationships. And, and, and we both have talks about that, which is amazing. And, nice. But, um, but we, I'd be doing sessions with him and they'd say, <laughs> you know, you know, listen, just go back to the trenches, do it fight and just like any career or anything you're doing in life fight and keep going and yes. don't stop don't stop don't stop that's the main thing is don't stop and yeah. who is it I, I winston churchill said that you know success was moving from failure to failure with zero lack of enthusiasm that's right so it's we just were constantly moving forward i did several things during my lifetime to confuse people um i um Started a production company for eight years, and we produced like Thompson Square and Parmalee and got a lot of people a record deal. Some people were like, oh, he's producing records. He doesn't want to be a session drummer anymore. Then I had a, uh, a song. Uh, I was a songwriter for five years with a yeah. publishing deal. And so Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, I started trying to write songs. And people yeah. were like, 
He's writing songs. He's not doing sessions. He's not producing. He's not doing sessions. Then I went to Los yeah. Angeles to get my SAG card, study acting for five years. People were like, <laughs> he, did, he lives in LA. He's an actor now. Exactly. He's not playing music anymore. I'm doing all of these yes. things. That and Because everybody wants to fit you into a groove. Everybody yes. wants to pigeonhole you because they get confused. Yep. If you can do more than one thing, they get confused. That's they don't so want confusing, that. It's confusing, yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, I feel you so much on that. Because that's a, that's a thing. Yeah. I mean, that's a... Chris keeps trying to get me into uh, Chris Isaac keeps, keeps trying to get me to do these voiceover things and all this different stuff. And, oh yeah. And I told him straight up, I said, I'm terrified to do anything else. Cause then people will think I'm not playing drums anymore. Well, He's a voice actor. What, what do you think? You, he, 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 you got pipes to it. Oh, really? Dude, get him some copy. Listen, yeah. he, he's got that like lower, you know, baritone that's going on. Oh, <clears throat> obviously not sounding like mine when I get all clogged I, up. I've got a voiceover well, demo. Well, anything you need, I can do. I just want to let you know. Listen that. to that. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Say so, no. 1025 WDVE. 1025. Okay. We, we, we can well, work you, on you this. Should, <laughs> hey, if Chris Isaac wants to get you a voiceover. Nothing for free. Um, you know, I'm just, right, right, right. <laughs> if he wants to get you like a voiceover agent, you should take it. Well, yeah. no, he's not. He's just saying I should. Yeah. yeah, you know. Here's the thing of a voiceover, though. It's like AI is starting to permeate. I know it is. You know what I mean? I know it is. And it's like I, I, I'm, I'm blessed with the clientele that I have. Mm -hmm. But man, I mean, for somebody new coming into the business, good I luck. don't even. I don't even. But see, that's the thing. I'm a drummer. Yeah. So I'm going to play music, and I'm going to write, and I'm going to produce, and I'm going to do all this. That's just like you said. It's just another thing I'd love to get into and see. Yeah. And what acting is another one. It's just another thing. I've been. I, I'd be a really good bad guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm totally. Just saying. So that's the idea is that I love the idea, but I don't want anybody to think, oh, well, he's not doing this I anymore. I confuse the hell out of these folks. Yeah, because that's yeah. not the yeah. case. It's that, look, people can actually do more than one thing. You know, yeah. it's, it's, uh, that's part of, you know. Yeah. You probably, you, it's you know, part of being a badass. <laughs> <laughs> At least a, a, a podcast host. You know what I mean? Uh, well, you can do that. I don't not, man. I didn't. It's like <clears throat> I just learned the word podcast when I came on this thing. So. Right. Yeah, so, you know what's so funny is it's it's this new m media that exists and like you know if I'm going to be living out here in Spring Hill, I'm going to be consuming a lot more podcasts, and it's great because you learn and like Jim's like you should uh, check out this podcast. Like I'm always discovering new things. Yeah, and, you should check out the mostly Middle Tennessee business podcast. Check them out at Jim. You are doing a record amount of promo sexual thing today. We're mostly Middle Tennessee business podcast. I'm taking notes from him because this is. This is really good. Richredmond.com forward slash podcast. People are just sick of me. They're sick, no, they're not sick of they're you. sick of me as much as I... Okay, so look at this list, Jim. I mean, the Warren Treaty, Laurie, Mc, Laurie McKenna, Brett Eldridge, Wheeler... Wheeler Walker. Okay, yeah. Okay, I know. there's I know. got yeah. to be okay, a story there. Wheeler is in... <laughs> He's insane, right? He is amazing. He is... Um, he's a comedian. He's terrifying. And he came in and said, listen, I want to make the best country record that's ever been made. Right. And then I'm going to put my lyrics on it. <laughs> I was listening to how you're saying it. Exactly. And it did, was, you, did you do the one, you know... Um, I did all the backup vocals on that one, too. Did you do the, really? did the big hit, the lick and the dang? And yeah, the that's thing? right. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God, that is funny as yes, well. Yes. It, it, his stuff is so... It was really hard to play. It's hard to... Because I was it was me and my brother, uh, Leroy Powell, and Brian Allen, and Dave Cobb. And it was the four of us in this room... <clears throat> With Wheeler and you can't you can't laugh into the mic and you can't la and you know how hot his his mics are and so I'm sitting there just going <laughs> like what did he say <laughs> you you can't say he said it that's like that's a country it. version of Connecticut white bread oh no, yeah he really he really is oh, a, yeah. he's serious about the music but the lyrics are so ridiculous and They're so raunchy. foul oh yeah. so foul but yeah. the one thing I loved about him which was different than uh, like say a David Allen co record or or uh, you know is that if you listen to every song, it's him making fun of himself. Yeah. That was very important to him. He never makes fun of anybody except for himself. Well, he'll go after like the Rascal Flats or Florida Georgia Line. Yes, but, it, but it's all him being an idiot and him being, yeah. even if he's making fun of other artists and all that stuff, it's him it's like, look at the character I am. Look who I am right now. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Now, was he a comedian that sang songs, or is he a musician that's incredibly funny? Uh, mm. Like, did he did he do comedy before he said, "I'm going to do the music thing"? No, I think I think he was a musician first. Yeah, 
I think he's always been a musician, and he's 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 great. He found his thing. He's great, man. He's great. I saw him at the Nokia Theater in L.A. It was yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, amazing. he's great, man. He gets the crowds going, and they love it. And 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 uh, I think that personally, I think that there was there was definitely a slot for him needed in the industry because everything was getting so serious. Everybody takes himself so seriously. When really, <laughs> if you think about what we do, I mean, we. We, our whole job is meant to entertain rich people. Like, that's our job. That's our job. I mean, our job is to enter. That's why, you know, that's why these people take parties, you know, and, and go, yes, I'll go play for your daughter's eighth birthday party for $4 million. Of course I will. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we're entertainers. That's yeah. our job. You know, that's our that's our thing. And, and I, I, you know, as a kid, we we romanticize this life and this and this this worth of being a musician and it is so unbelievably satisfying as a musician. Yeah. But you know, the fame and the things and they see us on buses and the nice hotels. And it's like, we like that too, you know, when it happens. Yeah. yeah. But most of the time <laughs> yeah. you're sitting in a parking lot somewhere waiting for 14 hours to go, right. to go play a show for an hour and a half for 90 minutes and then do a 16 hour, you know, deadhead to the next city, you know. Yep. That's usually what you're doing, but but everybody's, you know, thanks to social media, we can be like, <laughs> that's right. This I, is the highlight I really. Stayed the, glamorous I my stayed life at is, the Ritz Carlton. Right. It really wasn't my room and I'm not supposed to be in here, but check this out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My favorite is, I mean, you and I have been on private private jets. Of course. Is when everybody's got to do the video of them walking up to the jet or getting, uh, getting the picture. Just another day in paradise. Or like, I'm just getting This is where my of, office is today. No, Brandy, Brandy, Brandy wouldn't let any, she said no pictures, of the no jet. video. Right. Like, that was a big thing. It's like, I don't want, you know, people thinking that this is what we do. Because it's not. You not know, every this day, is, no. this is a This is such a special thing. No, no, none of that, you right. know, which I thought was really, that's great. Actually, I mean, walking, the pictures and videos, of you walking up to the jet isn't bad. It's when they do it in slow-mo with a, like, like a soundtrack, like the influencers, the business influencers, and know. it's like, you know, the door opening and you see the foot Look get out rich and, I it, am, and they're, they're getting up and they're putting the sunglasses on Oh my and, God! and it's all in slow-mo and they're like looking at the camera going. You know, one of oh those things. Oh my God, the, You do that really well. It's so douchey. Do you, do you have so, your own jet? Not yet. Okay. Well, well we, we if know, you're in the market, I know some, guys. Some of these guys are friends of ours. I mean, like, I know. you know what I mean? Like, That's the sad uh, we, part. we have friends That's that have done that. That's the sad part. I know. That, that do it every day. Yeah, they do yeah, it every day. You know, but it's like they, oh my God. And, 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 and it's a normal thing, and it's weird. Yeah. Hey, look yeah. at this. This is what was crazy. What? Man, man. No, no. Is that a different Chris Powell? Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because that band was wild. I've that is them. the other Chris Powell, that's the other and Chris that's Powell. not me. Yeah, but no. you you worked with the other Brandy, Brandy Clark, right? Yeah, oh yeah, Brandy yeah, yes. Clark. I've done a bunch with her. I saw her at the Troubadour. Yeah, she's great. Fantastic. God, her voice. Ashley, is Ashley Monroe, Mary yeah, Chapin Ashley's Carpenter. Great. She's wonderful. Oh um, man, just yeah, a, just a great list. You guys, oh. want, you guys want to meet Mr. Muff now, or? Oh yeah, we 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 definitely should go check out Mr. Muff. But <laughs> before <laughs> we end, we do the fave five I favorite think it was color. That big. Yes. What favorite color? My favorite color is blue. Yeah, I'm going to be getting a lot of blue, man. Um, well, blue's a great color in the ocean, man. The, 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 right. Oh, yeah. The earth. We are connected to the ocean. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, the sky. I mean, all of it's blue, right? <sighs> yeah. But do you wear a lot of blue or no? No, I wear black. Me too. Man. Everybody thinks I'm going to a funeral. That's black on black every day. Every One day. One little pop of color it's here It's very slimming. It really, really <laughs> <is>. <laughs> Especially when your guns are exposed constantly, man. Um, favorite food or favorite dish? Oh, probably ramen. Yeah, oh, really? I love ramen. Yeah. yeah, but now we're charging fifteen dollars for ramen. I know it's nuts, but I do love that they're taking ramen seriously in this country with the now. quail egg oh, and all that. And it's yeah. beautiful and it's wonderful, and and I'm still waiting for a really great one to come to Nashville. Because I was going to say, what's what's the one that you go to here in Nashville? Uh, there's one on Eighth. There's one I in the know, Gulch. There's there's uh, 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 what's the see names? I don't know names. Not what, rock and roll what area town? Not. Not not twelve south, but the other one, uh, Jacks or uh, uh, it's a terrible name for a ramen place. Oh, but um, is is there one that's next two ten Jack or whatever? It's across from Zanies. That one right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. All right. That reminds me of Toy Thai on Sunset. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, favorite drink? It could be fun or not so fun. Probably Glen Morangi. What is that? Scotch. 
Oh. Yes. Hey, what's your, uh, are you Scottish or English or what's your roots? So I did a 20, is that, is that I, I did a, yeah, I did a, I did a 23 and me and it said that I am Northern Europe. So kind of Scandinavian. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Northern Europe. So German Northern mm -hmm. Europe is what yeah. it said. The Norseman. You know, Which is funny. You know. uh, Dave Cobb, uh, he printed out a picture of that Neanderthal that they found. And he likes to bring it up all the time, um, <laughs> much to my sh you know chagrin. But he brings it up all the time and has the picture saved on his phone just for this purpose to show everybody how much this Neanderthal looks like me. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like the first human that they found. You know the you know, Scandinavian. So. Some of the Norwegian army started putting the barcodes on the ships. It's crazy. It's weird. So they can scan the navy. Oh, my God. These dad jokes are just so bad. But that's the same. <laughs> he's just, he's giving me the death. I'm scenario. actually disappointed in you. That's the <laughs> worst joke I've ever heard. It's, 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 I was expecting more out of you. You're so was, good. Uh, that's good. the same good up that they use on Laugh USA on Satellite. They're using, uh, they're using Roadcaster. Serious so I'm very disappointed in you, too, that you have the digital cup. You should have a snare and a thing over a there. A real thing. You. <laughs> like, like private parts with the rubber chicken. Who <laughs> <laughs> Robin. So there's... So is that high dollar scotch? No, no, no. no. Mid dollar. I'm a drummer. I'm not a singer. <laughs> yeah. I started drinking this from my brother when I was out with Travis Tritt. Yeah. Who have played with you guys was a couple times. After uh, David Northrup left, right? So my brother's the steel player oh, okay. in the band now. And so uh, I told him I was doing this earlier today. And he was like, hey, tell him I said hi. That's so, awesome. So uh, anyways, Leroy says hi. That's great, man. Yeah, it was yeah. such a small world. You tell him and I then, said hi, uh, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> this is, you know, That's really, funny, right? <sighs> that was I'll stick, good. I'll, I'll stick to my own jokes. No, no that, that was good. Yeah, Jim, thank God you're here because, you know, some drum podcasts are just, just so boring because they don't have a sidekick. Am you I know? a sidekick? Well, or co-host? You're a co-host, but not wearing that hat. That is <laughs> not a. That is not sidekick material. That's this is like boss. This is the, yeah. the, This is my Brian Johnson yeah. eventual mullet that I'm growing. Plus, I thought this whole time the way he's looking at you, you said, "Go ahead and say the wrong thing." Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I dare you. Sidekick, jeez. <laughs> oh me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. See, that's good. What about your favorite movie? It comes on. You're gonna watch it no matter where it's at. Oh, holy moly! My favorite movie. Oh. Oh. And that's got to be like a, a flavor of the week or month. Well, I guess I have I have a movie like I like to fall asleep to. Which one's that? Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> My God, yeah. The beginning yeah. or the end? All of it. I really? think it's, yeah, because it's it's very, it's a really powerful yeah. idea. I think that Tom Hanks did a great job. He did. I Tom think that, Hanks loves drummers. I think that that whole, yeah, I got to, another person I got to meet with Brandy, man. Oh, he was yeah. phenomenal. <clears throat> great, great, great hang and really fun and, and, uh, um, I got to tell him that I was blown away, but not by his performance. I wanted to let him know, not by your performance, but by your passion for remembering World War II vets. Yeah, man. I yeah. love that. I love that he took that it's on, great movie. Yes. and then and then got to you know work with him again for the Elvis thing, which was cool. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, that's a that's that's a first for us. And this one's difficult, but hey, you know, say you're got you're on the PCH, and you know. You're gonna go to Dukes, and you got the top down, and you're cranking up this song. What is it, man? Something that's it's a song you can't escape it. Maybe it's the melody, maybe it's the artist, maybe it's the production. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, you know, what? Uh, Whiter shade of pale. Yes, Whiter shade of pale. Wow. Every time. Every time. So what is Moody it? Blues? Is it because it it's ghostly, or it's a? Uh, the... I think it's a. It's the perfect feel. Good do, good do. Uh, 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 He's uh, uh, the, the whole. Everybody's listening cho to each other and following, and it just sounds like they're in whatever haze that they're in. Was that Procol Harum? Yes. Oh, that was and, Moody Blues. No, no, oh. it was a no. It, it, people think that that's a different band all the time. You're right, yeah. And they are. They it's that the song is perfect to me. I think it's perfect. I think sonically it's perfect. It just if you crank that up, it sucks you into that song, and you're, and it's just beautiful. It's just and and the way that the dynamics drop 
when that vocal comes in, it's perfect, and then and then blows up again. And I have to revisit that. Oh man. my gosh! That's... Isn't it crazy? We have these like secret things that we that have just appealed to us over the years. Like for, I love. I I don't know who the drummer is, but you know that early Rod Stewart faces stuff. You know mm -hmm. Maggie May and all that with oh, the yeah. trash can hi hat. Love it. Yeah, and they're just all sideways drunk. You yeah. know, and I mean, it's all these flams. Some of the best recordings in the world are are. You know, five people sitting in a room, half in the bag, yeah, and and they just start playing together like it it's has human. always been, yeah. and yeah. like it still should be. Yeah, it's not this this you know ten and two, you yeah. know kind of thing, yeah. which is which was by the way something that Dave brought to Nashville that everybody was freaked out about when he first came was that no you know everybody's looking at clocks and he's like he yeah. he fired everybody that was doing that. So, but now the way that Dave operates. Is there not to be too nosy, but is is there a paper trail with of the course, unions? So, always, so it goes always, into your, your always, pension. And and it's and it's funny because it always you know probably ends up costing him more right. than anybody because he won't do the clock thing. So what does he? How does he get around that? Pay direct? No, he, you you somebody's there marking the the car. time. Gotcha. It just it just it goes into overtime every into time. His it budget, goes into, which it shows exactly it. he's he's making less money as a producer, that's right. but he wants the uh, the best no, experience and product. Because so. everything he's looking for is feel. Yeah. Which is one of the things that all the players in the room will complain about because they're like, eh, you know, we could have done a better day. And he's like, no, it was perfect. It's like, you know, so we have a mutual friend, Mike Miley, great yeah. drummer from Love um, Mike. Yeah. from the Rival Sons. And he was saying that one time Dave told him he was like um, did the old trick like let's let's run it down, but it was red. It's red, and th and then he's like, "We're done. Yeah. We're, going, we're going to dinner. We're done. It. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I I could do this. No, no, you can't. We're done. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's where a lot of his brilliance comes from. It's knowing the right take. Yeah, because <laughs> so many players will be like, we'll take it until it's dead. It's almost like a Rick Rubin thing because a lot of people are like, Rick Rubin doesn't play an instrument and he's just kind of like, it's weird. Like, how does he get all this work? Because he is not thinking like a musician. I think he tries to think like the audience well, member. On which on which records though? Because, because yeah. you know, a lot of the times he's not even in the room. So. <laughs> he's I, no, he's no. executive producing. Yeah, and I love Rick Rubin. Yeah. I think he's br uh, absolutely brilliant. One of the best, you know, producers of our time. But, yeah, it'd be got you gotta be honest. I mean, he's got three records going on at a time. Yeah. And most of the time he's at his house doing yoga and and the the engineers doing doing yeah. a lot of the but he'll hear it he, afterwards and he, go He pops in and he goes, yes, That's the one. Or no. Gotcha. You know, and and that's the art of how he does it, which is which is phenomenal too, because he gets a great result, right? Oh my so God. so but you know, Dave yeah. Cobb's more of a hands on he's writing riffs and moving parts and changing lyrics and, yeah. and He's very, he's the most hands-on producer I've ever met. Amazing. Where he's one of the, it's like, he's producing it, but he's also one of the players that yeah. we're all sitting together working and he's thinking of drum parts and bass parts. And, and, and that's a special brain. It is a very, and it's also a very, you know, tortured brain because yeah. that's like, holy, how do you think of all that at the same, because I'm like, I'm just working on drums over but, here. But that would, at the end of the day, when you operate like that, just, just your brain is tired. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would think. Well, yeah. I, I mean, that's the. Do, don't you know, like a long session, oh it's arduous. Gosh. And at the end of the day, you're like, I got to get home. Well, and not only that, it's like you, you know, you need to be on. It's that first thing that you said during the start of this was that you got to be cool and you got to be, you know, don't be a germ to people and don't like, you know, when I do Dolly Parton sessions, you know, you can't be like, Selfie? I just want to sit on your lap the whole time. Is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> you can't well, I mean, do what's that. The, what is the protocol for selfies and stuff like that? It's you like, don't. Yeah, not at all. No. You never ask. No, that's awful because what that's doing is, you have to understand what that's doing. It's making them feel different. Mm -hmm. And in the studio, you what, what if it's a, hey, can I get a picture with you? Is no. That, still no. No. Hey, uh, Chris, I love that you- You uh, don't uh, want them to feel different. This is a- the yeah. studio is a place where we're all equals. And if you're asking somebody for a picture or a selfie, that yeah. means you're fanning out on them. And yeah. you can't do that. Yeah, you right. need to come into that session as an equal. Right. Yeah. So Sometimes like asking not how much... even as an equal as a, hey, you're singing great. So even like, hey, how much money you make? Stuff like that. Yeah. Or, or. 
<laughs> no, but Chris, I have missed so I many would, amazing I opportunities. That. That's a really good idea, though. I'm going to do that with Wheeler so next how, time. How much, are you gonna, how much money are you going to make off this album? <laughs> I, what do you make every night on merch? <laughs> Jim, I have, Can I, get a raise? I have missed so many opportunities of photos that I'm jealous of some of like, I yes, have, I have peers that are just like, wow. See, like, I mean, in radio, like we, just, we had so many people that came into the radio station in Vegas that it was like, hey, do you mind if I get a picture well, with that's, you? That's a different thing that's because, different, because yeah. you are asking them to come in yeah. and do an interview right? in the studio as a player. Yeah. You know, it's like you live there mm -hmm. and you're just part of the furniture. So you need to be there. Where the help. Kick ass. Yeah. Do your job and walk away like you were never there, you know. Mm. Now you can have fun and talk and be cool, but if you're sitting there germing people and I've yeah. seen I've seen players do it, really good players, and I've never seen them again because they don't come back in because that, no, that nose is so brown. But what you could it, do is at the sometimes you can end up in the at the end of the session with a group shot if somebody asks for yes. it. Yes. So yeah. I do I do actually have a picture with Dolly Parton. I saw it. From doing the thing, nice. and it's the most awkward looking picture at all. Because I'm like, was that her rock record that she did? Or it's no, oh. it was a it was a song we did for I I don't remember. It yeah. was something we did, yeah. but um, uh, after we, everybody was taking pictures with her, and I was just I actually had my gear, and I was I was on my way out, and I, and I put my hand up and said thanks, and and I forget who it was it was like, hey, you want a picture with Dolly? And I put my stuff down, and I was like. Absolutely, I want a picture. Yeah, with I, you got the pass because you didn't ask. I, mean, I didn't ask, yeah. and she's sitting there going, "Son of a bitch! And how did I get myself freaking?" I pissed? ended up playing um, the Newport Festival, the the uh, Newport Jazz Festival, Jazz Festival, yeah. with her uh, because I had a show with Brandy up there doing that, and she came in and did a whole set. Oh my and, God! And and I backed her, and I got to sit backstage with her, and it everything was normal and good and. It's yeah. like, oh, hey, I remember you from the studio. Everything was great. Now, if I would have gone up to her at that, at that, been like, top of the session. Hey, can I, yeah. can I, can I get a picture yeah. with you? Is it possible? You know, can I brush up against your arm? Is that, yeah. you know, that show probably would have been a lot different. It would have been like, can you get him out of the back? Because you, you turn into a fan and not an equal. Well, not, it was funny when I met Alice and Krauss one time. She was so germing on me. It was so it was off really awkward. Really, what'd you do? She, I, I was I was filming her boyfriend at the time, uh, John Wait. John Wait. What was he doing? He was singing. Oh, okay. And she wanted <laughs> to touch my butt, and I was like, "Hey, this butt's only meant for two pairs of hands." That's my wife. Did true, really, true story, by the way. She really touched your butt. She was uh, apparently reaching while I was because we were in a tight room yeah. at the radio station, and I had to get. I was trying to get like a low angle with the camera, and uh, while I was crouching down, she must have like. Was made a motion, you know, to to everybody else in the room's enjoyment. I just, you know, I, just I see. I just yeah. want to get this straight. So, Allison Krauss <laughs> grabbed your ass. She almost did. She she was going, for and it. you're complaining about. And it. I looked back at her and said, "Uh, uh, uh." Seems like she's fun. She's fun. You know, you. Does your wife listen to to yeah. this? Yeah, she knows. Okay, okay. I told her. Okay, yeah, Courtney, Courtney is okay. great, and she's the That's best why. sourdough bread maker in the world ever in the yeah. history of the world. Yes. Really? She's, she's I mean, sexy. She's, she's really good. And she's 23 sexy. years married. Yeah, congratulations. You just Thank had you. an anniversary on Sunday, right? That's right. Hey, this was a two-hour conversation. It felt like two minutes. Oh. I'm telling you what. You did great on your first podcast. Hey, thanks. Yeah. You're a natural... You got a good voice. Podcaster. Yeah. That's right. You, you're a natural nice guy who could play a really bad guy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Listen, yeah. and, and that's typically yeah. how it goes down. Look at you know uh, Danny Trejo. Oh, that's right. He is a really nice He's guy. He's a great Plays guy. All terrifying, the terrifying on screen yeah. though. He terrifying is. figure. Yeah. So everybody, check out MadCharlieInc dot com. Check out Thank Chris you. Powell on Drums dot com. Chris, I think you're. I think we need to extend this into some sort of other social engagement. I love it. Yeah, yeah. let's. You know, please. I, we're neighbors. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. For now. For now. And then when I move <laughs> down to the hill, you know, I'm, well. Until you, gotta, you move, you know, four hours to get to Alabama. Spring Hill. Spring Hill. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I got to do it. Yeah. That, <laughs> it's not so bad. I got to do it. I'm going to be, I'm gonna be so neighbors bad. with Jim. It's not so bad. Amazing. Hey, thanks for joining us. And Thank thanks you for, for your me. body of work. And thanks for being part of this amazing community and lifting it up, man. Awesome. You too. Thank Everybody, you. that's Chris Powell. And to all our listeners, uh, support my book. Hey, I wrote a book. It took a year of my life. It's called Making It in Country Music. An insider's look at the industry. Uh, Jim is telling me, go out and buy my drumsticks. Buy the drumsticks. I make $2 a pair. Trying to retire here, folks. I need to sell a lot of sticks. But uh, we appreciate you. If you love the show, be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find the show. Jim, as always, thanks for your time and talent. Of course. Chris, thanks again. Thank you. And we'll see you guys next time. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow.
follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.